Maybe the old boy has to go along and force this creation on me for anyhow. Maybe Mr. Gale just went along like he did when you were a little girl. Maybe you ain't ever grown up to him. No. <laughs> if you think Mr. Gale doesn't know I grew out of rompers a long time ago, you should have seen him gain his lost youth when I said it this. Oh, I hate dresses. Wish I had a pair of pants. Men get all the breaks. You can't expect one pair of pants to fall in love with another. Don't you think a girl should wear pants? Oh, yes, ma'am. You should, all right. But not on the outside. <laughs> oh, I haven't. You've been going that long carnival again. You better go get my uh, muff and wrap. Diana's nearly really ready. You should be right down, John. I'm a little doubtful about how she's going to take what I have to say. <laughs> In my capacity of executor, I find it difficult sometimes to live up to my full duty because I have to give Diana certain orders. She should be glad to take orders from one so distinguished as you. I know I should be glad to. Has your sister's husband been able to get any work yet, Alan? No, ma'am. They have a terrible time. Will you give them that and tell them not to worry? Thank you for being so kind to her. Oh. And remind me about those other poor distressed families. I'll take care of them tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye, Ellen. You don't have to wait up. No, thanks, John. I've had a plenty. I mustn't forget I'm getting along in years. Why, nonsense. A woman is only as old as she looks. And you don't look a day over 30. <laughs> and the man is uh, as old as he feels. And I feel like a youngster. Particularly when I'm with Diana. How are you, Diana? What's the big conference about? You. Won't you sit down? Well, I have a few minutes. Well, we can do a lot of damage in a few minutes. I received a call from your bank today. Do you realize that you've overdrawn your account $3,500? Well, it was nice of them to let me. Thanks for straightening it out. You know, I'm just awful at thinking. Oh, Diana, please listen to Mr. Gale. He's only trying to keep you from making a fool of yourself. Well, it's my money, isn't it? I don't know why he should object. Oh, Diana, you're hopeless. Don't you realize that you've already spent practically your entire income for the year? You mean I haven't any money? You'll have just $300 left to live on the rest of this year. Live seven months on $300? Why, that's ridiculous. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Nelson's called for you, Miss Diana. Oh, excuse me. I'll see you at the office tomorrow, Mr. Gale. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Abby. Hello, guys. Gee, I'm glad to see you, Ted. We're beginning to get warm in there. Come on, let's go. Let's do that. And grand 
became the dawn. <laughs> but I thought you were so much in love with Mary. Oh, what do I care about Mary? She's just a sap. <laughs> Come on, baby. Give me a little kid. <laughs> Oh, no. 
John. How are you? Congratulations, old man. Thank you. You certainly put that South American job over in great shape. Did you have any trouble? Oh, not particularly. But the weather was terrible. The heat almost drove us crazy. You have no idea how hot it gets in that part of the world. <laughs> well, you won't be bothered much with heat for the next few months. Huh? We just got in another big contract. Well, that's fine. And you're the boy to put it over. Oh, now, John, never mind that soft soap. Where am I going to this time? China? No. Well, let's have the bad news. Siberia. Siberia? You're kidding, aren't you? No, it won't be so bad. You'll only be gone six months this time. Two years in South America, two days in New York. Six months in Siberia. John, it sounds like a jail thing. <laughs> Oh, you'll have time to look the old town over. There's a good many things to be ironed out yet. You won't have to leave for about three weeks. Well, to do everything that I've been promising myself for two years and three weeks is going to keep me pretty busy. <laughs> yes? No, I'll send them in. My ward. She got in a little trouble last night. As soon as I straighten it out for her, I want to go over that Siberia contract with you. You don't mind, do you? No, John, not in the least. Well, I'll wait outside until you're finished. Huh? Well, pardon me. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Good morning, Jane. Hello. Thank you. Sit down, please. You've already seen this, I suppose. feel after your escapade, Diana? Well, that's all I've been hearing all day. Friends phoning, newspaper men chasing. I'm at my wit's end. I don't know what to do. But I can't understand why you pleaded guilty. Why didn't you phone me, dear? I didn't hear all the judge said. I heard guilty or not guilty. So like all the rest, I said guilty. Well, Diana, I can't for the life of me understand why you should dance before all those people dressed as you were. If I told you on Sunday, I've told you a dozen times. Diana, I have a very unpleasant task to perform, one that I don't relish a bit. Now, you know how fond I am of you, don't you, dear? Yes. Now, please don't misunderstand me. This is not my doing. This is simply a clause from your father's will. Now, listen carefully, Diana. To my daughter Diana, I bequeath the residue of my estate to be turned over to her when she becomes of age without any restrictions whatsoever, provided that she has committed no act or acts that have in any way besmirched my name. But in the event that this should happen, my daughter Diana Wyman shall forfeit all interest in and to my estate, which shall then be distributed as hereinafter provided. Diana, you realize what that means, don't you? But it isn't fair. You know it isn't fair. Well, now, about this affair last night. Of course, it's not up to me to judge or condemn you, but... Oh, you make me tired. You think the only thing that has legs is a piano. You're still living in the 90s. Never mind, honey. I know you're a good girl. John will take care of everything, won't you, John? But, Jane, you don't seem to realize the seriousness of this thing. In the face of this will, there really isn't one thing that I can do. But you don't think I'm bad, do you? I don't know why the newspapers print all those awful things. It was all an innocent fun. Yes, but, my dear child, you should never have gone to any such party in the first place. The trouble with you is you're getting old. You think a girl should stay home every night and settle her down? If you had your own way, you'd put all women in glass cases. Diana, I wish you wouldn't take it in that way. After all, I'm only trying to help you. John, does this mean that Diana's income will stop? Yes. From now on, she'll have to depend on me. I don't have to depend on anybody. Well, I'm 
Diana, I wish you wouldn't do anything rash. After all, you... I won't stay here and be humiliated. I'll show you all I can take care of myself. I'm making plans now to leave town. Oh, Diana, where are you going? Now, don't you worry about me, Auntie. I'll be all right. Jane, I'm... I'm sure that this is the only way to bring the child to her senses. Just a minute. Uh, George. Yes, sir. Miss Stevens, I want you to meet my engineer, Mr. George Duncan. How do you do, Miss Stevens? Mr. Duncan, I'm delighted. Well, I, I must run on with Diana. Well, Johnny, you ready to give me the dope on that Siberia job now? Not just yet. There's something else that I want you to help me with. All right. I think I can for you, John. It's about my war. Yes. This will explain it to you better than anything I can say. Looks kind of price. Those who needs a lot of taming down. No, don't get the wrong impression, though. Well, John, I've never seen the dame yet I couldn't handle. I'll slow her down to a walk for you. George, I appreciate that. Yes, I'm sure you will. I'll put her to bed every night. No, no, I don't think that would be necessary. Oh, detective stuff. Put her to bed. Keep tabs on her. Find out who her boyfriend is. Why? Send your reports every day. All that sort of thing. Just you leave it to me. Now, George, yes? I don't want you to forget that uh, I have more than a fatherly uh, feeling for her. I gathered as much. But remember, I still think she has bum ankles. You'll never know what a relief it was when I saw the porter bringing you to this section. Wow, I was afraid I'd have to spend the night alone. And that would have been a terrible ordeal. Yes. Yeah. But the best sleeping on trains is a nightmare. You know, I'm so easily upset. Doesn't rushing through in the night and the darkness. Oh, 
terrify you? No, I can't say that it does. As a matter of fact, I've never given it a thought. Separating us from the vulgar gaze of men like him. I actually believe that man's trying to flirt with me. Oh, yes. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, about the upper berth. You know it has to use a ladder. Oh, how thrilling. Like the balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet. coming to. Look here. It's really unbelievable. A young girl dancing practically in the nude. Now, when I was a girl... Oh, pardon me, won't you? slept here. She must have got off during the night. Hey in there. Who do you think you are, Rip Van Winkle? Disturb your beauty sleep. You know, I paid to ride to New Orleans, and I'm getting tired of walking. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, but I didn't realize. Oh, that's all right, as long as you don't stay in there all day. Have you ever been followed by a detective? What do you mean? That heavy set man over there has been watching you. Oh, well, so that's the way the wind blows, is it? You might as well come down out there and be comfortable. You've gone. Well, come on. Let's have the lowdown. I was merely trying to get 
get out of New York without anybody knowing about it. Gee, ain't that funny? I was trying to do the same thing myself. Were you? Mm-hmm. What's your name? Mine's Marie Lemaire. Marie to my friend. <laughs> Mine's Diana Wyman. Diana to my friend. So you're the Jane the cops pinch for putting on that dance a couple of nights ago. Well, this to you, baby's get certainly makes a tough for us professionals. Oh, are you a dancer? Mm-hmm. Well, where's some engagement in New Orleans now? What's your business? No, I haven't any. All I want to do is get away from everyone I know. The cinch. Leave it to me. I've been ducking these guys all my life. Pardon me. Did I see you flash a badge in the station in New York? Sure, what of it? I had an assignment to watch a girl, but I lost her. Oh, you're one of us, huh? Well, she can. Sit down. Thanks. What agency are you with? Sorry, but the boss doesn't want his name mentioned in connection with this case. Oh, I get you. Well, uh, what's all looking, Danish? Maybe I can help you out. Oh, she's not so good looking. She's got a turned up nose and her mouth's a little too large. Her eyes. I don't care what you think of her personally. What I want to know is how she dressed. You haven't been in this racket very long, have you? No, I. Just breaking in. It's my first case. I thought so. What you want to do is concentrate. Now get your brain to working. Now, what was the color of her dress? It was green with, uh, with a fur collar, but she's a brunette. That's the idea. That makes it a lot easier. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Why, do you know where she is? Sure. She's right over there, hobnobbing with the dame I'm tailing. They're hiding behind that curtain shoe on the fat. But don't worry. They can't put anything over on us. Well, you've sure taken a load off of my shoulders. I thought she put it over on me. You'll learn from experience that none of these mouths are smart. What do you say you and I have a smoke and a little snort, huh? Good. All right, okay. The bird said they didn't have a chance of getting away. That malls weren't smart. Are you trying to be sarcastic? No, nope, just truthful. A man with my brains should never get mixed up with an amateur like you. Oh, will you stop that crabbing and let me concentrate? Nerd. Hello, Jane. Uh, yes, John. 
I recognized your voice immediately. Have you had any news from Diana? Uh, a telegram from Duncan. I'll read it to you. That little devil gave me the slip. I'm going on to New Orleans. She'll probably show up there. Isn't that too bad? And I was so sure that he and Diana would meet and like each other. Oh, though, there's nothing to worry about. Oh, I know George. He's just like a bulldog. He'll never give up. <laughs> so there's nothing to worry about. Well, is that a nice thing to say, John? <laughs> I think he's a very charming young man. Mm. And so good looking. <coughs> well, uh, <coughs> yes, well, it's, it's, he'll do for this sort of job. He, yes, he's quite all right. I think you're very, very clever, John. I think you made a wonderful choice when you selected Mr. Duncan to watch over Diana. <coughs> yes, I, I think so, too. Well, uh, <coughs> Uh, I'll let you know as soon as I hear any more. Goodbye. There she is. Mind your own business. Josie, haven't we lovely eyebrows? Come on. It's just awfully cute. <laughs> for sore eyes. You don't look so bad yourself, baby. Why, I thought you'd never get here. They had me pegged in New York. It was tough getting out. But I finally managed it. Funny I didn't see you at the station. Why, I've been meeting all the trains for two days. I came in by bus. I spotted Blake on the train. Hmm. Blake? Yeah, he must have seen me getting out in New York. See, I just really got away from him. I wouldn't be here now if I didn't. See, who's that I saw you talking to out there? Her name's Diana Wyman. She was making a getaway, so we came together. I don't know. I'd hate to take any chances. I thought she might come in handy. You never can tell what's going to turn up. Right here. Oh, boy, what a hole. You better get this out of here before they stop missing it. All right.
I think I see one of them where? Right there. What did I tell you? I'm always right. <laughs> what are you going to do? Go on mooning at her all night? Go on. I've got a job to do myself. <laughs> Uh, Wyman, this is indeed a pleasure. Awfully sorry we couldn't get together for breakfast. You have no idea what a disappointment it was. Why, my whole trip was ruined. You don't mind if I join you, do you? You may not realize it, but my job depends on you. Just a cheap, common watchdog. If you only knew how I hate dogs. Listen, lady, get this. I don't like you one bit better than you do me. Do you understand? Well, at least there's one thing we agree upon. You know, you're going to see a lot of me. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put you to bed at night, and I'm going to wake you in the morning. Not only one night, but every night until I'm taken off of this job. Hmm. And before you're through, you'll realize you've undertaken one thing you can't handle. Oh, I don't know. Just remember, a job's a job in these tough times, and I'm going to keep mine. I put you to bed, didn't I? Remember, I'll call you in the morning. Good night. Waking her up in the morning. George Duncan. Isn't that romantic? Well, I, I don't think he means that, except uh, figuratively. Uh, what he means is that uh, he's trying to tell me that uh, he's keeping a close watch over her. J Jane, I wonder if I made a mistake in sending him. I'm sure you didn't. I'm positive that you couldn't have selected a better man. Well, no, I don't know. Oh, it's I... so thrilling. I can hardly wait for the next report. I'm going to New Orleans and handle this thing myself. Now, John, John, you're not going alone. I'm going with you. Well, I'm taking the next train. If you want to go, you'll have to hurry. I will. I'll call back for you in an hour. All right, John. After tonight, baby, we'll be on the easy street. We've got enough now, Don. What's the use of taking any more chances? We've been lucky so far. Why, everything is set, darling. I've got the tickets. I'm all packed up. Why, we'll be out of town before anybody knows anything about it. You better run along, darling. It isn't good for us to be seen together. All right, Don. See you tonight.
have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Number, please. In room number 312, please. Don Pedro. Just a minute. No answer. All right, thank you. going down the stairs. Oh, honey, isn't there something I can do? Nothing serious. It's only a sprain. Ouch! Oh, come on. I have to get you up here and put you on the bed. You hurt like the devil. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I'm gonna have to stay off of this for a couple of days. Can't stay here like a baby. I have to be for that down in an hour. You have to phone and tell him I can't make it. Gee, it's a shame just when things were going along swell. The worst comes to the worst, I'll take your place. I wonder if you could. I know I could. Didn't I dance my way out of New York? I believe you'd get away with it. Here's the key to the dressing room where my costume and mouse may never know the difference. Now, don't you worry, honey. I'll put it over. I'll see you later. Don Pedro, please. Mr. Don Pedro hasn't come in yet. decoration on your foot. I stumbled and you went around to pick me up. Maybe it ain't too late yet. Ouch! Hey! Don Pedro. <laughs> Is he down here with you? You're a dick. Why don't you find out? Okay, I will. I think I'll stick around and see that you don't put anything over on me. You realize, of course, that this is my bedroom. Oh, that's all right. I'm not bashful. Say, you're not very entertaining, are you? What do you want me to do? Kiss you? Don't flatter yourself, sister. What are you going to do? Park yourself here all night? I want to go to bed. Go right ahead. You won't disturb me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm a family man. I have my doubts. Well, I am. 
say, I think I will get out and let you get in bed. And see that you stay there. And don't pull anything funny, because that won't be healthy for you. Baloney. Hmm. And they still slice it thin. that Lemire dame. They won't pull anything tonight. She's laid up with a sprained ankle. What are you talking about? One of the boys just phoned in and said she was Nancy. They're putting something over on you. Better get down there right away. few dancers have had that honor. I suppose you're down here to see Connie. No, I'm really here on business. Not a silly business. Silly business? Well, seems silly to me. I'm following a girl. Oh, you're a detective. No, no, no. I'm an engineer. An engineer following a girl? That doesn't seem to make sense. Well, the whole thing doesn't make sense. This is interesting. I'm curious, Mr. Duncan. Duncan. Who is this girl? What does she look like? Oh, she's not so good looking. She's got a little turned up nose and her mouth's a little too large. Her eyes. I don't know. There's something funny about them. I, I just can't tell you what it is. I never heard of anybody looking like that. Oh, I almost forgot. Her legs. Are they pretty? Her piano legs, we call those pretty. Thanks, Mr. Duncan, for your opinion of me. Waiter! Waiter! What do you think this is? Get out of here, quick! Where my bill? Is that enough? by 
by dancing in a place like this. I told you before I have to live, didn't I? Besides, I'm going to show them all that I can take care of myself. Wait a minute. You've added this to your list of accomplishments. How dare you call me a thief? Well, where'd you get this stuff from? How do I know? Somebody handed it to me. I suppose they meant it for Marie. She sprained her ankle and I took her place. So, that's why Blake's been after her. They thought you were Marie. I'm responsible for you. I want the stuff. If there's going to be any trouble, I can explain it. You can't. I can explain it if you can. Oh, no, you can't. You haven't got a leg to stand on. Why, you've just been disinherited. You're living with this woman, and she's wanted by the police. You agreed to substitute for. Here you've got the stuff in the dressing room. Why... You're an accomplice. You'd never get out of it. Open up. Please. I want to talk to you. Come on. Come on. Open up. Open up. your time, didn't you? So you're in on this, too. Oh, don't be a sap. Hello, Marie. Come on, come on. Thought you could get away with this, didn't you? Hey, what is this, a sister rat? You know who this girl is, Blake, and you know who I am. Come on, come clean. I know your game. They slip you the stuff, and you make your getaway. I tell you, the girl doesn't even know what you're talking about. Oh, I've listened to your fairy tales long enough. Mm -hmm. I've got a notion to take both of you in. Go on, sit down. Sit down over there. Go on. Go on, get over there. got away with it this time, but you're not all of us going to be so lucky. Why don't you use your head, Blake? The mayor's the one you want. Yeah. When I want your advice, I'll ask you for it. mess. You have to let me help you. I'm going to turn those jewels over to the police. I'll turn them over myself. I couldn't let you take the responsibility. Aren't you ever going to get any sense in that little head of yours? Are you going to act like a child all your life? Well, I won't let you do it alone. We'll both do it. Now, will you wait outside until I change my dress?
You thought I was dumb enough to let you get away with that, didn't you? Well, give me those. Well, I was just taking them to the police station. Yeah, and I'm taking you. Come on. Diana, are you ready? Please hurry. I'm coming in. Blake, you can't do this. Oh, is that so? Well, you're coming along, too. How do you like that? But listen, oh, I'm trying to explain to you. Oh, you don't come understand. Come in. Come on, baby. Let's go. Did you see anyone watching this place? I've been afraid to move out of here all night. Blake was here. Blake was here? Yeah, I've been trying to get you on the phone all night. Then you weren't at the Red Domino. No, I got Diana to take my place. Say, so you've got all the rest of the stuff here. Let's get out of here. I'll get it. I hid it in the other room. I was afraid Blake had searched this place. of trying to escape the stolen jewelry. She's teamed up with a notorious character, Marie Le Maire, known as the Maud. Well, but Sergeant, there must be some mistake. You don't understand. This young lady is my ward. I'm sorry, Mr. Gale. I'll have to hold them. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here's the two you want, and here's the rest of the jewelry. When we broke in on them, she was taking these out of the other Jane's room. Listen, Sergeant, I've been trying to tell this dumb flat that these kids don't know anything about it. I knew you were watching me, and I framed the whole thing. Kid thought I had a sprained ankle, so I'm trying to help me keep my job. How did she get the jewelry? Don Pedro gave it to her. All right, Blake, take them out. Come on, you. Bring in the other two. Okay, come on. This sort of puts a different light on things. If I release them in your custody, will you be responsible? Why, well, certainly, Sergeant. Diana. I'm awfully sorry I got you into all this trouble, George. Never mind that. When do I leave for Siberia? Just as soon as we get back to New York. Need me any more, Sergeant? No, I don't think so. I'll see you in New York. Where did he say he was going? To Siberia. So am I. John, I'm sure you picked the right man for Diana. Huh? Oh. Yes, I... I guess you're right, Jane. Uh. Well? Shall we go? Yeah. 